Anybody know what happens to pure glycerin when it gets below 30 degrees? Yeah, sludgy it turns into molasses. It can get so bad that virtually you can bend the pointer because the pointer is only aluminum. So what do you do? Well, some people instantly will say silicone. You fill it with silicone. Silicone has a lot less viscosity. It will uh, handle minus 40 degrees. The only problem with silicone is because it has such low viscosity and it likes to eat rubber and other sealing materials. So before you silicone fill a gauge, you got to make sure that gauge is set up for it. Otherwise, you get it to your customer. Next thing he knows, it's leaking because it's going to eat all the sealing material. There's a third option on liquid fills, and that is, believe it or not, glycerin and water. Now, you may sit there and go, I'm looking at minus 40 degrees, and you want me to put water in a gauge? Well, how is that possible? What happens is this. You ever use, well, we all use antifreeze, right? If you took your, dumped your radiator, poured pure antifreeze in it, and did nothing else, how does it work? Not very well. It's not good on the low end, not good on the high end. But if you read the jug of antifreeze, which is propylene glycol, basically, and it gives you the proper mix of water, everything changes. Now the high end changes, the low end changes. Well, it's the same with glycerin. When you cut it with water, depending on the percentage, you can get down to minus 40 degrees or more just by using glycerin and water. And the beauty of glycerin and water is it doesn't attack any of your seals. So a lot of gauges, especially when we're filling them in Houston and we're shipping north up into Wyoming and Montana and areas like that, we will do glycerin and water.